The Russian Air Force renamed the Vozdushno Kosmischeskaya Zili (VKS) or Air and Space Forces in 2015 was meant to spearhead Russia's so-called military operation in Ukraine. The Russian Air Force had a 10 to 1 advantage against Ukraine when the campaign started. It was thought that Russia would have full control of the skies in a few days and will be able to neutralize important military targets like Ukrainian command and control centers as well as air defense systems. But to the surprise of the majority of the observers, the Russian Air Force has failed in this critical aspect. Similarly, Ukrainian Air Force couldn't do much. Now, a top American U.S. Air Force general has provided crucial inputs regarding this situation. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how air defenses have affected the Ukraine-Russia conflict as per a U.S. Air Force general. Let's get started. According to the commander of the U.S. Air Forces in Europe and Africa, General James Hacker, robust Ukrainian and Russian air defenses have rendered both sides' aircraft, particularly those used for close air support missions, largely worthless in the war between the two countries. About 60 Ukrainian aircraft and 70 Russian aircraft have been downed in the year since Russia launched its invasion, according to Hacker a feat accomplished by the two countries' highly capable air defense systems that have left much of the battlefield airspace off-limits. Hacker said during a roundtable at the Air and Space Force Association's Air Warfare Symposium, both of their integrated air and missile defense, especially when you're talking about going against aircraft, have been very effective, and that's why they're not flying in many areas," he added. Russia's inability to control the skies was an early surprise of the invasion that has generally persisted ever since. As such, both countries' militaries have had to adapt their tactics for close air support missions, relying more heavily on ordnance like HIMARS launched rockets to strike ground targets. Aircraft, meanwhile, have mostly had to hang back outside the coverage of air defense systems and employ longer-range weapons, as per Hacker. He stated, when asked about what might be required to reconstitute Ukraine's diminished air power, the problem is that both of the Russian as well as the Ukrainian success in integrated air and missile defense made much of those aircraft worthless because they can't go over and do close air support. Ukrainian air defenses are composed of a hodgepodge of Soviet-era weapons and more modern Western systems supplied by countries like the U.S., Germany, and the United Kingdom, with each requiring their own specialized training. Ukrainians decide where to position assets, Hacker said, and have been able to effectively defend their airspace despite challenges inherent in fielding several different types of weapon systems. For as effective as they've been, Hacker admitted that America's help for Ukrainians in integrating different systems in missile and air defense is not as well as you'd have hoped. For several months, there's been discussion among the U.S. and other NATO nations regarding the possibility of providing Ukraine with multi-role F-16 fighting Falcons. Ukraine aims to receive multi-billion dollar hardware transfers including platforms such as the M1 Abrams tank. However, the U.S. has been hesitant to provide F-16s thus far, despite the U.K.'s offer to train Ukrainian pilots on Western aircraft. But Hacker said their efficacy, especially in close air support roles, could be in doubt due to current air defenses. To be honest, I don't know exactly how many they have left, Hacker said of Ukraine's total aircraft inventory adding that a rough estimate would be about 60. Anti-access area denial A2AD, systems prevent military forces from approaching an enemy's territory, even at distances of hundreds or thousands of miles. 
These systems are comprised of advanced integrated air defense systems that possess long-range engagement capabilities, capable of targeting and shooting down aircraft from distances of hundreds of miles. Examples include Russian S-300, S-400, American Patriot, and German Iris T. Air defense systems can cause havoc and it's well known. So stealthy aircraft and bombers are being developed and deployed. The economics is such that even if multiple missiles are spent to bring down a single jet, it's still a great win. In the Ukraine-Russia conflict, no stealthy aircraft are being used, since Ukraine has none of them, and Russia only has a few Su-57s, which have been used in two to three missions. Anti-radiation missiles that are designed to take out air defense systems, like Russian KH-31P and American AARGMER, are also critical to successfully penetrating well-defended, high-value targets. A sophisticated electronic warfare system that can jam the radars of air defense systems can also help. But as evident, air defenses have an upper hand when it comes to Ukraine-Russia conflict. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.